This video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. Hello noble ones and welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and here I am this evening looking through articles on the internet that tell me stuff about the ancient world and civilizations because <laughs> I never learn, do I? We are back on Cracked, yeah I know, yeah, I, bear with me, bear with me. So I've already reviewed one of their articles which was the five ridiculous lies you believe about ancient civilizations but the thing is they went on my previous video this one here link in the description below I've only reviewed one of their points today we're going to look at another one probably the main point which I think it's <laughs> okay let's just get into it shall we ancient Greece was a progressive beacon of reason this is the myth the myth says before the Roman Empire came along and conquered the world, reason, logic and civility ruled in ancient Greece, where during any random late night beer run, probably be a wine run, you could run into Aristotle and Plato in line at the cash register. The whole country was a liberal arts major's wet dream. Truly, the era was a golden age for humanity. Let's see what the reality is. Let's see. Ancient Greece resembled a modern-day sectarian war zone with constantly warring bands. Now, on the war part, they keep pointing the finger at saying, oh, you know, they were always at war. I've already responded in my previous debunking of another article, so just refer you to that. That's not to say that they were in bright spots or that Western culture doesn't owe a great deal to set bright spots. We'd just like to remind you that the ancient Greeks exiled, lynched or executed some of the brighter among them. I don't want to be that guy, but it, shouldn't it be the brightest among them? But I don't know, you tell me. What do I know? Ever heard of a guy named Socrates? Yep, executed. See, the Greece of popular imagination never actually existed because there was no one Greece. The Hellenic Peninsula was home to over a thousand city-states. And ancient Greeks identified with their city-state like patriotic gang members. Also, each gang had its own armies, government, customs and religion. It's interesting that they think that this makes ancient Greece a myth in the sense that you just said that they are city-states. It doesn't seem to me really strange that each city-state was patriotic to their own, well, city-state. But regardless of that, let's continue. Oh, and they all had slaves. Enough slaves to make the antebellum south seem downright forward-thinking by comparison. So this sentence here, it's a perfect example of what is called presentism. Now, what is presentism, you say, and is it really the case or is it just me misusing the word? Well, let's have a look at what presentism is from a dictionary standpoint, and then you tell me if you think that it fits. Presentism, uncritical adherence to present-day attitudes, especially the tendency to interpret past events in terms of modern values and concepts. To give you a secondary definition, an attitude towards the past dominated by present-day attitudes and experiences. In our day and age, we all agree that slavery is wrong. Wonderful. Now, what these people I don't think fully understand is how modern and really recent of a concept this sentence that I've just stated is. In other words, they're throwing mud on top of ancient Greece to be like, no, it wasn't a nice place because they had slaves. Even though the abolition of slavery, it's an extremely recent event. And of course it changes country by country and I mean, medieval France already had a certain amount of slavery abolished, so they were quite forward thinking, but in America slavery was still a thing until the American Civil War, which is one of the reasons why it happened. And even when slavery was abolished and those said slaves were freed, it was done at a price, in the sense that slave owners were compensated for the slaves that they were liberating, so there was also a massive profit from that. It wasn't done for freedom, at least not by everyone. It's a complicated topic and it probably deserves its own dedicated video, but just to say that they pointed the finger at ancient Greece, expecting them to have modern ideals of slavery, abolition, even though we didn't have those modern ideas a couple of hundred years ago. Because for all that talk about lofty ideas like freedom and democracy, there we go, the ancient Greeks possessed no qualms about enslaving their fellow man. Sure, some philosophers said enslaving fellow Greeks wasn't super cool. I hate the way they write. Literally, again, a 12-year-old writing. Greek Enslaving fellow Greeks wasn't super cool, but then city-states like Sparta and Thessaly told them to take their philosophy and get... Okay, we got it, we got it. They're telling us that the antebellum south is seems downright forward-thinking by comparison to the ancient Greeks, and yet, instead, the reality is that the ancient Greeks, for their time, were incredibly forward-thinking. For example, this sentence that they say, I'm going to read it again, some philosophers said enslaving fellow Greeks 
Greeks wasn't super cool. No, enslaving fellow Greeks was prohibited by law in ancient Greece. Oh, and freedom-loving democratic Athens had more slaves than anybody. Yeah, did you check the population by comparison? Because we're talking about one of the largest cities in ancient Greece, so go figure. And while we're on the subject of the only democratic city-state, now's probably a good time to mention that democracy lasted in Athens for less than two centuries. And I love how they don't tell you why democracy as a form of government stopped being a thing. And the way they write it, if you keep reading, as you will see, they make it sound like uh, not even the Athenians liked it, so they just, you know, abolished it. It didn't last that long. No. Democratic Athens stopped being democratic because the Macedonians defeated them in battle and forced them to do so. Little detail they're omitting here. Now, if you're like me and you like surfing the internet looking for articles to read, then a good thing to do is to do it in safety, and that's why you should definitely use today's sponsor, Atlas. VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network that makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted channel and this way it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers, it hides your IP address and online activities. Atlas VPN is a great choice because it was developed by cyber security specialists and, among other things, it gives you access to the data breach monitor, which is a security feature designed to track any data breaches related to your online accounts, automatically scanning any leaked information. But another add-on through Atlas VPN is the fact that you can use Netflix from any country regardless of where you are. So let's say you wanted to watch a show that they only broadcast in the UK, but you were in America. No problem, just change your country through the VPN and boom, access granted. I personally always have Atlas VPN active on my machines because one account lets you use unlimited devices. I personally really like Atlas VPN not only because it's a great choice but also because it's very affordable and that links to today's offer for you. You can get a three year subscription to Atlas VPN for just $1.83 per month plus three months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. Now if you were considering getting a VPN but you weren't sure about the prices, well now it's the time to make use of this special time offer and get Atlas VPN for a ridiculously low price, but make sure you do it quickly since this is a time limited offer. And don't forget to click the link in the description. That's just $1.83 a month for a 3 year subscription plus 3 months for free with a 30 day money back guarantee. And big thanks to Atlas VPN for sponsoring my video. Almost every ancient leading mind couldn't wait to return to tyranny, or literally any form of government other than democracy. This? Oh my gosh, why do I do this to myself? I need a drink. The way they use the words tyranny and democracy demonstrates that they completely ignore that there is a massive difference between ancient democracies and modern democracies. In other words, the golden age Athenian democracy is not the same thing as contemporary democracy. Athenian democracy and classical political theory cannot be read through the lenses of contemporary political agendas and cultural moods, which is exactly what they're doing here. They don't know what the word tyrant means from an ancient Greek perspective. They just read it in the modern way. They expect ancient democracies to work exactly as modern democracies, which undermines the entire educational field. Plato and Socrates weren't buying it, while Aristotle's shining defense for it was simply that it didn't suck quite as hard as other governments. Well, first of all, I highly doubt that that's how Aristotle's put it. And secondly, Plato, whom they're trying to make appear as a somewhat close-minded individual, is the one who said that women should have equal voting rights in ancient Greece. Now, did they ever achieve that in ancient Greece? No, but it's already quite impressive that they thought about that considering how late vote to women was given in our current modern day. I mean, women in Europe couldn't vote until 1915, 1930, 1955, depending on the country. In Switzerland, women were given a chance to vote in 1971. Ancient Greeks were like, yeah, maybe we should have women vote. But the antebellum South is more forward thinking. Do I need another drink? I'll have another drink. Like, check this out, check this out. I guess it's better than just like stabbing people until they agree or something. 
Well, considering the fact that the majority of people exactly acted like that, so you don't agree with me, I'll stab you to death, I think that it would be quite impressive considering the time. So, while philosophical and cultural achievements were made in ancient Greece, they didn't spread too quickly or too far. Seriously! Ancient Greek philosophy, thinking, culture, art, religion were central for the development of so many cultures around it, including ancient Rome. I mean, even the Roman representative democracy and republic, in a way, was strongly influenced by the uh, Athenian democracy, although it was executed differently. Saying that the philosophical and cultural achievement of Greece didn't spread far and quick is an utter lie. I mean, all you need to do to, to see that that's a complete fabrication is to look at the language that they're using to write this article, aka English. How many of these words come from Greek? Including the word democracy, which comes from demos, people, kratos, the state ruling or government. Less than 5% of those living in ancient Greece were literate. Most Greeks weren't the urban intellectual of popular imagination, that, of course. They were ruler farmers and herders who most likely never ventured be beyond their own city-state. Well, first of all, here they are, they are literally, I'm excusing my French, but they're literally taking two statistics and pulling them out of their ass. Again, excusing my French, or Greek in this case, because first of all, they're talking about general literacy, which is an extremely complicated field, and even though you can find statistics online, which is probably what they did, they just googled it for two seconds, these statistics often have loads of different possible interpretations, and they are not 100% sure, because again, it's very difficult to estimate the actual level of literacy within a country, particularly ancient ones. Secondly, when they say most likely never ventured beyond their own city-state, how do you know? How do you know how many people traveled at this time? They are just completely making that up. See, part of the problem is that we interpret the ancient Greeks through the works and words of those who were most prominent, and those who were most prominent also happened to be their most exceptional minds. But the average ancient sheep herder didn't give two shits about logic, literature, or the theatre. The theatre was exactly built for the general population's entertainment. He was too busy being a sheep herder, who preferred the comfort and familiarity of superstition. It's interesting how people point the finger at, at the ancients for superstition. I can literally name I don't know how many people who still believe in superstition in our day and age, but yeah. And also the, this idea of sheep herders and peasants and farmers, all they did was farming the land, is absolutely incorrect. For example, if you look at the medieval period, believe it or not, the medieval peasant had more national holidays, if you excuse the term, than modern people do. We work harder and for longer periods of time than people in the past. The two parts that really drive me nuts is the point of the finger because of the slavery, but most importantly, this complete misunderstanding of what an ancient democracy is. There are, as I was saying, some points of similarities between how ancient democracies worked and how modern democracies work, and if you want, I could make a dedicated video. In fact, if you want me to make a dedicated video when I go into the details of the act, every single difference, point of difference between these two uh, forms of political theory, and absolutely let me know in the comments below. If I see enough comments, I will make that video. But the idea that they have this expectation that just because they're using a word that we still use in our day and age, democracy, and they have this expectation that then also the ancient Greeks' form of democracy should fit modern day standards, otherwise they are backward thinking. Well, first of all, you're talking about people who are thousands and thousands of years in the past, so why would you expect them to think like we do? But also he has, again, this form of presentism in the sense that they think that everything we do in the modern era is inherently better than what they did in the past. And as I was saying, people in early 14th century France were already against slavery. We weren't against slavery up to not even a hundred years ago. I mean, the 13th Amendment of the American Constitution is relatively recent, and you had to enforce it with war. In the early 1st century China, during the Xin Dynasty or Xin Chao, Wang Mang, which was the emperor at the time, actually abolished slavery already. And he got murdered for it by the people and then replaced with another emperor who brought it back. Which is in fact what happens sort of 
all the time. I mean, slavery gets abolished somewhat, but it, it comes back because humans are horrible, past or modern. But luckily, there are some minds among us that, uh, that do love a great concepts such as freedom. And the problem is that there are also minds like those who wrote this article that really like to think that oh, the present modern man is so forward thinking and open minded. I mean, wait a few hundred years and you'll probably be judged because of the way you were thinking or because of, for example, cancel culture. I think ancient Greek culture is much better than modern cancel culture, for example. I mean, if I had to choose between an ancient Roman and a modern woke person, I'm choosing the ancient Roman, much more forward thinking. But I really feel like I have to step in and defend ancient Greek for what they have done. First of all, even though, again, the democracy in the way that they intended it was different to the way we, we consider it, like, for example, of course, to vote, you had to be a man, you had to be Greek in the sense you had to be from Athens in Athenian democracy, and you had to have served in the military. So yes, it's different, but you also had to be at least 18 years of age, which is again, similar. And the election system functioned differently, but there are also points of similarities, like the division into three main uh, governing bodies, which is very similar to the way uh, modern democracies are organized. It's interesting how treasurers needed to be wealthy, but I mean, I can understand the, the point of view there, in the sense that if you're wealthy and you have been successful, you know how to how finances work, and so you are fit for the job. And of course, military generals and people that had demonstrated what they could do in the sense that they could lead armies, then they were thought to be also very capable when it comes to politics. So yes, absolutely, they were different, but still, ancient Greece was one of the first democracies in the world. And it happened at a time when you either had one single individual with full power or a ruling aristocratic class. They brought up this idea of, no, let's give at least some power to the people, because of course they're never going to give full power for the people, not even modern democracy does that, but give a certain level of power to the people, let's bring in the people, let their voices be heard. And this happened almost 3,000 years ago. If that's not forward thinking, particularly a few since they like comparing to modern people, well, let's compare it to what they were thinking in World War II Germany. Who is more forward thinking now? And when it comes to slaves, again, everyone had slaves at that time. The Romans had slaves, the Germanic tribes had slaves, which is often misrepresented, particularly in that monstrosity of barbarian, link in the description, where they try to say, oh, the Romans want to enslave us, yes, but you were also enslaving, it's just that they don't say that because they want the Roman Empire to look as the evil guys, and then the, the Germanic tribes are, oh, we're all for freedom. No, you're not. <laughs> Everyone had slaves. The Anglo-Saxons had slaves. The, all the Germanic tribes had slaves. They were enslaving each other. At least the Athenians said, well, let's not enslave each other. Let's just enslave our foe. I mean, the pyramids were built by slaves in ancient Egypt. Again, when you're looking at an ancient culture, you need to look at it in the context of the time period, possibly with a full-on understanding of what you're looking at. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and remember to take advantage of the special offer from Atlas VPN through clicking the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.